Hello, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a long-awaited episode of the Dr. Rita Pickle Show. It's been a very long time, but we have a very interesting guest as our first guest back. Sure, I'm sure it, it'll be someone who has lots of stories to tell, lots of adventures. I'm talking you up a big game. What's up, C-SPAN? <laughs> How you doing? doing pretty good so i want to i want to just jump right into it when did you join 2b2t uh so it was a while ago um i don't remember the exact date uh the earliest that i can confirm i was on the server was like late february 2012 i think i started a month or two before that but it was so long ago it's hard to remember now and how were you able to find 2b back then was it face punch was it 4chan yeah, so it was 4chan. I had played Minecraft a little bit before then. Um, my friend had told me about this uh, fun little browser game where you could build stuff and um, tried it out for a while, bought the game, and then I started seeing the Judge Holden comics being posted on 4chan V. And I decided to check out the server, and that was all she wrote. Yeah, I mean, the Judge Holden comics were a huge, huge lure for people to join. I mean, it's so it's so strange, especially for back then for there to be a, you know a co- an entire comic around a game server especially something as yeah as minecraft was yeah it was super super interesting to see that there was a server like that i mean the thought hadn't even occurred to me that there would be servers like that so to see those comics and then to jump in and and see how true to form they were and how accurate they were how it actually was was pretty cool so what made you want to stay after after finding the server what was kind of your first experiences uh, so I started out really just wandering around and kind of looking at stuff. I spent a lot of time just exploring and, and seeing, you know, lots of ruins and griefed bases and that kind of thing. And um, for me, I think it was just the sense of um, I find it really interesting to see how people interact with each other in those types of no rules environments. Um, you really get to see what people are really like and how 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 people develop you know these kind of little mini societies and mini cultures with each other and i always found that super interesting yeah and i mean i'm sure you know as you kind of progressed on the server you were involved in a few of these a few of these groups a few of these alliances what what was your what was your involvement in a lot of the events that, that transpired on the server some of the incursions maybe or you know some some yes. particular so, um, you know, to be honest, for the first couple years, uh, I really didn't interact with too many people outside of just the chat and, and kind of doing my own thing and, and making my own bases and talking to people in chat. But uh, I think it was actually early 2016 uh, is when I finally started basing. Like, I had a base before that with some friends, like people I know uh, personally in real life, but it wasn't until 2016 I actually started hanging out with some guys on the server. Uh, we had a base for a while. I remember I used to talk to Jared a lot because I was one of the few people who was like uh, not not mean to him all the time. So I would talk to him a bit. Character. Yeah, he's he's a cool guy, and um, he gave me access to account for a little while. And um, yeah, I based with some guys. Funnily enough, actually, one of the one of the guys we I was basing with was actually uh, Baba J. Uh, when he first joined the server, it was me, him, uh, Alien803, Doom Taters, Mr. Walker4, I think Pokeball99 was there for a while. Yeah, and unfortunately, so that cringe. base was grief. Pokemon. I mean, I, we invited him because it was, it was you know, I liked uh, I liked seeing him spam the chat, and I wanted to give him a place to do that Dude, in safety. He was, so. he was just crazy. I remember when he was at Shenandoah, he was, like, younger than me. And, like, I was I was so young, but he was, like, younger than I was. And he would just squeak so bad in chat. And, oh, like, man. scream and cry and, like, actually act like he had some stuff going on. Like, it was, it was just, like, it was just, like, someone really needed to be watching their kid. And yeah, were. it's funny. It it's almost like the base we had there was almost kind of uh like a lost island of misfits in a way. Yeah, it was just a bunch of different a bunch a bunch of different people with a bunch of different oh, personality yeah. types. Sweet. Well, d- tell me a little bit more about about your involvement maybe in some of the earlier incursions and what the server was like when we started getting waves of people because I mean before that, I mean it was just a glorified chat box. I'm yeah, not. pretty much. I mean, yeah, back then, you know, you, you could you could hang out with other people and there was, you know, the kind of drama that went on back then, you know, seeing a lot of that going on. But yeah, when uh, June 2016 and, and the rush of people 
um, you know, starting to see the queue and everything. And we had the priority queue for a while and that was nice. Um, and then once the priority queue was removed, I kind of, I kind of lost interest for a while, came back every once in a while. Um, actually I'm back playing now cause it seems like, uh, the numbers are starting to drop a little bit. And so that's nice to see, but you know, outside of that, you know, I base with a couple guys, but I've been pretty solo. Um, one of my big things on the server, I like to transcribe books, uh, especially books from other games and other uh, media that I find interesting. So I transcribe the books into the game and I make copies and I like to spread them around. And I've seen some of those books kind of spread around and people have gotten their hands on them and seem to enjoy them. So that's been pretty fun for me. What are, uh, what are some of the books you've been able to transcribe? Uh, so I started out with a lot of books from the Elder Scrolls series. So I was transcribing some of the more uh, metaphysical texts from the Elder Scrolls series, 36 Lessons of Vivek, um, stuff from different... I, I like to do the um, kind of the obscure texts that aren't necessarily in the games, but you could find on like the Imperial Library from some of the writers of the Elder Scrolls. I like those writings a lot. So I've transcribed a lot of those. Uh, Love Letter from the Fifth Era... Uh, I think was pretty popular with people. They really liked reading that. So I made that and spread a bunch of copies of that around. Yeah. And this is kind of a segue, but I think it's an interesting, interesting story. Well, not really an interesting story, but it's set up to be an interesting story, but it's really just kind of not your name. Uh, C-SPAN. I, I, I remember asking <laughs> you about it on the server. I was just interested, you know, how'd you come up with your name? Cause I mean, I, I knew what C-SPAN uh, was, but I just figured maybe there's something a little more to it, but Sure. So, you know, I get asked this a lot. Um, to be honest with you, uh, the reason I saw so when I bought my Minecraft account, uh, you know, I had to think of a name and I was actually spending a lot of time with my TV on in the background with C-SPAN playing, you know, just seeing that logo all the time and thinking, huh, well, that's probably never going to be taken. So let me grab that. And um, yeah, it just stuck. And I've, I've used that name in a lot of different places now, but actually it was originally just a Minecraft name I had decided to come up with. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, that's a strange affliction to, to C-SPAN out of all channels. Do you still want to Yeah, it now? stands out. Uh, not as much. No, I don't really even have a TV anymore. Um, but at the time I had this old TV and felt like, uh, just leaving something on in the background while I built stuff in Minecraft. So. Have you heard of the uh, the C-SPAN pranks? Like, have you, have you seen the two, the 2B pranks on C-SPAN? Oh, yeah, I have. Yeah, it's it's I have Googled that and had a chuckle at that for sure. Yeah, I mean, you, you must, like, you know, have to Google your name at some point and see all these prank videos pop up. Yeah, well, that's actually one of the upsides of the name, I think, is that uh, it's really hard to, to Google um, anything about me personally. You know, you type C-SPAN in there, what are you going to find? So... Yeah, that that is a good point. Um, I, I guess it's a kind of a sacrifice. I w actually, you know, maybe not even a sacrifice of of uniqueness because I mean, really, when you take a brand name in a game where you can only have that, you know, everyone has a unique name. It's pretty unique in its own right. Just you know, it's got a little bit of brand familiarity behind it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I think people definitely remember when they see it, and, you know, I definitely, when I join, you know, random places or discords or whatever, people will be like, oh, yeah, I remember you, you know, back in the day, because it's, it's an easy name to remember, so. Well, uh, you know, if a lot of people remember you, I'd like to know maybe about some of the people that you remember, um, very specifically from your time on 2B, who are some of the people that kind of stand out along your, uh, along your adventures on there? You know, back in the day, I remember uh, spending a lot of time getting into just kind of flame wars and arguments with a lot of people. I think I think it was Branalon I used to kind of talk back and forth with, and we would kind of trade insults and, and yell at each other a bit. And I, I got into it with a bunch of the guys. I remember um, Pyrocynical for a while, I think, or Pyrobite, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, not, definitely like not I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared, I remember we you, we used to talk a lot in PMs, and I still talk to him occasionally. Um, you know, the problem is it's just been so long for me now. I mean, that was what almost ten years ago. Yeah, um, I've I I, you know I've gotten married and started a business since then, and my life has really changed a lot since then. So it's just kind of a blur of different things that I've done and people I've talked to. So it's been a long time. 
Yeah, what can you say about where where you were when you started and where you are now? Because it, it must be such a such a steep change to like go from, man, I'm just playing this video game and like maybe no life in it, you know, because it's it's one of the only fun things to do. To now, you know, you're you're married, you have a job, you have all these other things going going on, and it's become more of a hobby. That's kind of oh like yeah, for hobby. sure. Oh yeah, I mean to to be sure. Like when I started playing, you know, I was literally living in my mom's basement, smoking weed every day. You know, playing Minecraft, playing TF2, this kind of thing. Um, you know, kind of moving. I've done a lot of moving around since then, and yeah, like at this point, you know, I'm married, um, own a business, and all that. So it's it's been a long um, a long journey to get here and here i am still still playing on the same minecraft server and i appreciate being able to do that oh yeah and it can it could two completely different points too is what's what's so interesting yeah. to me you know i think a lot of people think that you know once you once you start doing other things you're just gonna forget it gonna forget about something that had such an important like impact on your life um you know for the people that it did you know the people that played for for years i don't really think it's something you can truly escape from you know, they, oh, they definitely say, they not. Say you can never leave. I mean, you really can never leave. I mean, very, very few right. people have have achieved that. And well, I mean, I, it's I such. A, they barely have even done so. I mean, some people have, but it's you know, I don't know why you would necessarily want to. It's it's such a unique server. There's you know, I know there are copies and clones, but nothing is going to have the longevity that two B T T has. You know, just. Yeah, you know, the sake of simply being there for as long as it has, no other server could ever possibly replicate that. Um, you know, there's really nothing out there like it, and that's you know, you can't you can't replace it, you can't trade it away for anything else. So, I mean, even with all the copies, I'll still stick with the uh, the original, so to say. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I don't really think any copy can ever really top it unless it's an, an exact copy of the map. I mean, it's the, the map is the big allure because I mean. It's gone through so many versions over the years, but I mean, if you started a if you started an Anarchy world now, I mean, there'd be nothing special about it. It would just be a regular Minecraft world. It's like it's like this yeah, is like, exactly. you know, just a completely different game, you know, offset. You yeah, know, like, for sure. I mean, to it, expecting to expecting it to be just like a, a normal survival world. Right. I mean, that's one of the cool things about it is you know being able to go back. Um, you know, a while ago, uh, I was playing in January or so, and and I had the opportunity. I was talking to some people, and they were they were posting some old uh, sign dumps, and um, gave me some coordinates that actually brought me back to the original base that I had started with a couple of buddies in 2012. And so I actually went back to that base, and fun, you know, funnily enough, it was still standing. You know, some other people had kind of built on top of it and built around it, but it was just crazy to see that and think that you know, wow, this was really almost you know nine ten years ago that me and some friends built this and here it is and that that sense of history is just um there's really something special about that yeah it's like those ruins that will really never truly go away and you can always go back and visit and you can still see like it, it, it's like uh it's it's the craziest thing to me because you know memories in real life obviously you know there's no way to go back and, and relive a specific memory but that's that's something physical that's something physical like a, a physical area that you can just go back and be in once again and like you remember everything it's it's really weird like going back to a base like that especially after several years yeah then you know it's there there's some other bases i wish i could uh remember the coordinates to you know back before i realized the utility of uh taking screenshots with the cords but um yeah it's just really cool to even think that you know you might have built something, you know, however long ago, and somebody else might have found it and done, you know, who knows what with it. And that sense of, like, that's real history right there to see how people kind of build on top of other things and, and uh, you know, really, really um, just just super, super interesting to see that happen in real time. Yeah, they give it a lore. I think, I think that's one of the things that makes it, where people don't want to leave is because these other games, you know, they have to create their own story, these characters, this whole, like, universe around it but i mean this kind of builds itself you know it, it gives it gives the players the power to literally impact the game itself i mean if you if you really care that much and and that's what's insane to me from when it started to now because it definitely wasn't that or it wasn't that on such a large scale at one point yeah absolutely i mean you know obviously there are a lot more players you know a lot more people have come through the server and you have a lot more people playing actively um I mean, you know, considering how big the world is, you know, that 30 million, the negative 30 million 
uh, region. I mean, it's bigger than Earth, obviously, and that's. I think there's plenty of room for you know as many people as want to check it out. If we could get rid of the queue, that'd be great. But you know, um, it's 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 actually a good thing I think to see that kind of persistent interest and persistent activity. I'd be very upset if anything happened to the server. You know, I'm glad in a way that you know there's still people playing and still people supporting the server and keeping it up and keeping it going. So I can't complain too much. Yeah, and people that that a lot of the time kind of respect what's come before and want to to build off of that that more than i've noticed in re in the past years you know around 2016 and all that nobody really cared but you know it's kind of gotten to a point now where people are really looking back and thinking like man i want to keep doing something like that or i want to do something better or come up with something new i mean it's it's really insane that after four years on the same version there's still people finding new stuff like it never gets old yeah absolutely i mean people are still building and people are still finding stuff that's you know years old and you know, finding old signs, finding old bases, uh, you know, evidence of what came before. And, you know, like I said before, trying to build on that and, and improve and, and kind of do bigger and better all the time. And, you know, some of the, some of the mega bases that people do and, and that kind of thing, like who knows what people are working on right now, right? Like there could be something in the works that's going to blow everyone away when it's finally revealed. And that's, that's always exciting. Yeah, I mean, there's really no way you can be aware of everything going on at the given time. And there's no way you can really conjure it up until it happens. Um, but, you know, side sidebar from this really deep conversation, I do want to ask you kind of a funny question. What is something sure. that maybe you did earlier on that when you came back you realized, man, either I shouldn't have done that or I should have known to do this instead, maybe like a tactic or something? Um, hmm, that's a good, that's actually a good question. I mean, it took me a while to catch on to the idea of like, uh, hacked clients. You know, I think I spent probably the first, uh, first six months to a year not even realizing that was a thing that could be done. Um, you know, I think honestly, if I could go back and do it over again, um, I'd probably try to socialize a bit more because I really did enjoy the time I spent with other people. And I think maybe if I had put a little bit more effort into kind of, you know, getting in with some of these groups, I could have had a lot more fun, but I enjoyed the time I had. So, um, you know, it's not really a regret or anything, but, uh, definitely, definitely socializing and, and that social aspect of the game is a lot more important than maybe people realize. Oh yeah. And especially, especially as time has gone on and now it's like, it's not as much of an interpersonal thing. It's more of just like this, like huge, like people have to literally fill in applications to get friends. Now it's, it's very strange. Like people that are just now coming yeah. to the server, like you can't like, unless you were here before at a time where you didn't have to do that, or you just got really lucky. It's so hard to establish yourself and like get something going because now it's like either you have to do it yourself and it's so small or you have to join this big group and it's just it's these crazy power statuses now that didn't exist before or not on this large of a scale oh yeah for sure i mean i think you know for for newer people who are getting into it the best thing they can do is be persistent you know you're you're not going to be uh you know you see a lot of new guys join and they want to immediately make a name for themselves and, and you know be some big player on the server and that doesn't really work that way you know be persistent you know find a couple of dudes or a couple of people that you know are you know willing to play with you base with you chances are your base won't even last that long but you know you keep being persistent with that and eventually you know people do recognize you and people do know okay this guy's cool he's not gonna grief a base or he's not gonna do this or that um that that's when you start i mean i've been invited to plenty of places i'm just a, a bit introverted so i tend to kind of politely decline most invitations that i get uh, i prefer to kind of play with myself or with people i really know and really trust but um, you know, if you're just getting into it, I don't know if you necessarily have that luxury unless you are okay with just playing by yourself and treating it like single player with chat. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, I, I think the chat aspect of it in general has kind of gone downhill. I mean, I'm seeing, I'm seeing kind of a change lately, honestly, where the chat's a little bit more fun to, to be in, but I, I, I mean, it used to be riddled by bots for years and spam and just like, it was it was just not what it used to be but in like the most unfunny way because i mean we had spam back then too but it was really just like copy pastas mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, you see the the, the the bot people, the the you know, the shops and all that. They've gotten creative getting around the filters and you know, um there there was definitely a period, like you said, where it was just totally unusable almost with the amount of uh bots just spamming URLs and spamming Discord links and it's it's a little better now and you do see people kind of, you know, piping up and joking around and having a good time with it. And uh I think I think the trend is in that direction for sure. I think give it another couple of years maybe and we'll almost be back to a place where the server used to be previous you know prior to 2016 but that could always change you know who knows what big youtuber is going to come around and shake things up but that's got to be the exciting part too because you, you never you never know who really is going to find the server next and to think back like no nope, everybody wanted the server to blow up i think like everyone really wanted somebody to, to notice it and to appreciate it that they, as much as they did but nobody really considered the ramifications of what of what would come with that the, the amount of people and the extreme culture change that happened like almost immediately like that must have oh been yeah for sure it was it was crazy i mean i remember uh you know there were there were times where you would log into the server particularly you know late at night early in the morning where there may be five ten people online and and but that was a time when you know you really felt like i donated to the server back then and i know a lot of other people who did as well and you didn't really get anything for it maybe a message of the day for a while or something like that but um you know there was there was more of a how to put it like there was more of a ownership you know you felt like okay this is a place that i play and i want to make sure it stays up and you know when you saw those really low numbers it was like okay well i wonder i wonder what the future of the server is going to be and i remember people would talk about that you know joking about oh yeah this isn't going to be here in a year or two years or whatever and then yeah that explosion of players was um it was just crazy i mean that's when our that's when our base got griefed when i was uh you know, hanging out with other guys there, you know, it was that explosion of players um, made it kind of inevitable that somebody was going to find the place because there was just so many more people online. Yeah, and what's what's kind of your opinion of of how server ownership has changed, kind of the transparency from House's side, and if, if that's even the same person? I mean, th there's reason to believe it, it's swapped up. So what's your kind of opinion on the ownership over the years? Yeah, who knows? I, you know, it's it's hard to say because obviously the server is still up, and that's that's a good thing. Um, you know, some of the more recent things, this kind of efforts towards updating the server and bringing it into newer versions of Minecraft. You know, that's good to see. That's interesting to see. Um, I almost feel like uh, you know, Housemaster, whoever's running the server these days, um, the way they've done it is really the only way it could be done. And I understand that there have been these incidents in the past of you know, uh, whoever happens to be running the server doing things that they may or may not have should you know should have done. Um, but for the most part, you know, you want an anarchy server. This is it. You know, this is what you're going to get. You know, the the anti cheat plugins that exist, they exist for a reason. You know, you can't allow people to do certain things because it would simply break the server. Um, you know, duplication glitches and that kind of thing. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have an opinion one way or another on that. Um, you know, people are figuring out dupes all the time, and then they're getting patched and you know, legal items getting reverted and this kind of thing. It, it happens. I, you know, I wish it didn't just for the history, you know, it's, it's kind of sad to see uh, history almost being erased like that. Um, but at the same time, like you don't want it to get too crazy. Like there need to be some limits on what people can do. Yeah. And what, what kind of like, what, where do you think he's gone overboard in a lot of his plugins? Cause you know, it's, it's very obvious to Threadstone and, very obvious with Elytra too. What do you? What's some vanilla stuff that you wish wasn't so overpowered, and you think could change for the better? Mm, I mean, it's it's so. I, like I said, I've been playing recently, and it doesn't seem too bad right now. At least you know, for my gameplay, I'm not uh, super into like sophisticated redstone contraptions or anything like that. I'm a pretty basic builder. Um, you know, there have been times where you know the rubber banding and the 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 block rubber banding was really bad you know getting kicked for uh the server thinks you're flying just because you know you jump too high or something like that that you know that stuff is mostly done away with now and it seems it seems to be in a pretty good spot um you know i don't know it seems it seems like right now i can't even complain too much about how things currently are um 
I don't I don't like what goes on with priority queue bands, that kind of thing. You know, if you're going to pay for a service, you should have access to it. Um, you know, how how you deal with lag machines and this kind of thing, I don't really know. I'm not I haven't been in that position of operating a server like this. Um, but I feel like I feel like there's an alternative that doesn't involve uh, taking people's money and then removing the service they're paying for. But I don't know. Yeah, there definitely is, and it's it's almost like sacrilege to the original two B two B two T because it's just like the banning somebody on a on a server with no rules is like making it a server with rules. You know, they're, maybe they're not explicit rules, maybe they're not obvious rules right when you join, but like. There's definitely rules that everyone kind of knows you have to abide by now if you don't want to get screwed up or by house. Yeah, I mean, and I understand that. Like, uh, you know, again, the lag machine, it's it's an interesting issue, right? Because, you know, it is supposed to be an anarchy server there. You know, you are supposed to kind of be able to do what you want. Um, but at the same time, like when your gameplay involves denying gameplay to other people and not, not in a not in a real in-game way, but simply, you know, just uh, dragging TPS down to one or two or whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's. I don't know exactly how to feel about that. It's. Almost, I think it's funny when it happens. You know, I, like I said, I'm a simple builder. I'm not really doing anything too important generally when I'm on the server. But, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to wait eight hours to play in this queue and, you know, you get in and you can't even do anything, that, that can be pretty frustrating and I mean, let's let's be real here. Like, you know, whoever's operating the server now, it's a business for them. You know, they have to, you know, people who pay for priority queue are customers. They have to be kept satisfied. They have to be kept happy. You know, I don't know how you feel about it. And I won't comment on that necessarily too much, but that's how it is. So, um, you know, the idea of doing, you know, rev- I, I would prefer if lag machines and this kind of thing were, you know, if simply the chunks were reverted or something, something other than, um, you know, going in and removing priority queue was done because I feel like that's a bit heavy handed, but yeah, I, and like it I, doesn't really eliminate the problem. I mean, it just kind of eliminates the person, and they can always just come back on an alt. It's just like a temporary solution that's just kind of a dick move, and ultimately, yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said earlier, there, I, there's definitely an alternative. I don't necessarily know what it is, but I'm sure there's something else that could be done. Yeah, and, and kind of on that same note, what do you think, you know, plans for the future are in terms of updating? Like, you know, are, if we're ever going to move to 1.17 or above? Well, I sure hope it happens. I know there is a test server for a while. Um, I would love to see that happen. Um, it would be interesting just to see the server kind of, you know, jump three or four versions at once. Um I, I would I would really like to see that happen. Maybe maybe it would make more sense. I don't know anything about this really, but maybe it would make more sense to do it in a kind of phased update schedule rather than going all the way from you know one point twelve to one point sixteen or one point seventeen. Um, but you know, it's I mean we've been on this version for how many years now? Like it would be nice to get some new things going, and there have been a lot of changes to the game that would. Uh, you know, really, really enhance the experience past where it's already at and uh, make it make it more interesting and more fun, especially for older guys, older players who've, you know, seen and done it all. Right. So something I'm looking yeah, forward I to. Just, I just remember that excitement when we got the World of Color update. I remember exactly where I was and thinking like, man, this is so cool that this server is updating right now. And like, there's all this new stuff we can do. And it's crazy that it, it, it feels so long ago because it was. And it's like, oh, it's, it's time, you know, it's, it's, it's time for this to happen already. It's been so long. And you, you, I think, I feel like we're right on the precipice of some sort of change soon. Yeah, I hope so. You know, I, I don't know what the conclusions were that were, um, you know, reached from the test server. I hope, I hope that they were promising and I hope that we at least get some updates to that soon. I hope we hear something about it, even if it's a, just a loose timeline of how things are, are going to go. Um, that would be that would be nice to see. Yeah, and, and kind of to to wrap this whole thing in a nice little bow, I'd like to ask you what your opinion is on kind of the culture of two B, what it, what it can become as the server goes on, even if it updates or or doesn't. What what? Oh, it's great. See? I love it. I would I w- I would like to see, or I guess what I think we will see is just a further development of 
you know the unspoken rules of the of the server you know there's uh there is kind of this like mini society if you will that's kind of slowly evolving and we're we're seeing that happen in real time and it is a slow process and i think that's just going to continue um you know hopefully personally i hope we see less people who come here from youtube videos expecting it to be this epic grand thing and more people coming here because you know it allows you to play this game in a way that no other server really does and uh and you know forming more groups and and bigger groups and you know i mean it, this is a social game and and you know you if you burn one person it, that does get around and and people kind of i think have realized that you know you you can only do that so many times before nobody wants anything to do with you so you know i i think the server honestly will probably become more and more peaceful over time yeah that'd be that'd be really nice that i feel like mojang would have to add some sort of way to protect though like protect buildings in some capacity because I, I feel like if there's a way to grieve something there's always going to be chaos there's always going to be drama there's always going to be two sides you know, there, there's really no way to sustain peace until peace is mandated, which is kind of crazy to think about in a in a sociological sense that, like, if it can be broken, someone will break it at some point. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, peace, it, it's one of those things where, you know, like I said, you, you can you can be a bad guy. You can you can do the griefing thing, um, but you can only do it so many times before people kind of know what's up and know what you're all about and you know that to every base you grief is another door that you're closing for yourself and if that's what you're okay with that's what you're okay with but you know people will find who's trustworthy who's who's going to respect things and and who's worth uh you know putting their trust in so yeah i couldn't i couldn't afford it better myself honestly uh so so kind of on that note it's been nice talking to you um thank you for coming on being the first guest back very interesting absolutely yeah i appreciate uh being given the chance to talk about the server for a while yeah this is awesome thank you so much yeah absolutely